Revelation chapter 22, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets and his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure did enjoy the good singing. We enjoyed the good congregational singing, the good choir singing, the good special singing. God, we've enjoyed the good Sunday school class. God, enjoyed the good report of the jail services and how you blessed in both the men's and women's service there. God, you're a good God, and we've enjoyed the blessings of God. Lord, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. We're thankful for the words of life. God, I pray if there be any amongst us today who are unsaved, Lord, if they were to die today, they would not spend eternity in heaven. And Lord, I know the devil tell them they've got plenty of time. The devil tell them all kinds of lies because he's the father of lies. But God, I pray today the sweet Holy Spirit of God, through cords of love, would begin to speak to their heart. Let them know there is a Savior. His name is Jesus. And He'll save them from their sins if they're willing to call on Him and ask Him to save them. So God, I pray they'd get saved. I pray for other folks that are here today. Maybe somebody under a load carrying a heavy burden. God, I realize burdens are lifted at Calvary. And God, I pray that you'd lift their heavy burden. Help them to take on the yoke of the Lord because your burden is light. God, I pray if there's somebody struggling, you'd strengthen them. Somebody seeking answers, they'd find because you said seek and you shall find. Uh, God, whatever the need is of every heart in here today, God, I pray you'd meet those needs. Uh, Father, we pray you'd put a hedge about us today. We know the sorry, no good devil would like nothing better than to disrupt or distract in the service. So, Father, I pray the sweet Holy Spirit wouldn't be grieved or quenched. Uh, we sang earlier, the Comforter has come. God, I pray you'd come and show up big in the preaching part of the service. Uh, and I pray you'd touch hearts and lives. Uh, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, touch Brother Bob, help him to get feeling better. Uh, be with little Samantha, help her... Uh, and meet every need of every heart. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. As a way of introduction to this text, I want you to notice the attributes of New Jerusalem. Look what it says in verse number 1, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Thanks be unto God. There's a crystal river on that side. Uh, we find in verse number 2 in the midst of the street on either side, uh, there's the tree of life. Uh, verse number 3, we find there shall be no more curse. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we're going to the land where there will be no more sin. Uh, there'll be nothing that defiles. Uh, there'll be nothing that is rotten. Uh, there'll be no more venom. Uh, there'll be no more hurt. Uh, there'll be no more pain. Uh, there'll be no more tears. Even God wipes the tears from our eyes uh, no more devil no more temptation no more lust uh, no more pride uh, no more bitterness no more anger uh, we're going to the land of love and peace because he is the prince of peace uh, and he's loved us with an everlasting love uh, it'd be worth going to heaven just to be away from the presence of sin huh we find in verse number three that the throne of God and the lamb was there 
we find uh, in verse number 5, there's no night there, uh, no need of a candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. These are just a few attributes of New Jerusalem. If we read in verse 21, we'd find out more. Thanks be unto God, we're going to a wonderful homeland. That is, if you're saved. If you're not saved, you can go to this wonderful homeland. Notice, if you will, the access that we have. We have access to him. His throne shall be there, and we shall be with him. We shall reign with him. We have access to him and these attributes. You know something bad about museums? You can go look at stuff, but you can't touch it. You can go to a car show, and they got them roped off. You can't touch them. I think if they have a car show, they ought to hand you the keys and let you take it for a lap or two, huh? But no, you can't touch it. Uh, it's like taking a child to a candy store and tell them, you can look, but you can't taste any of it, huh? Uh, can I say that's not heaven? Heaven is ours. Uh, we'll get to go and partake of it all. Well, we have access to these things. Uh, listen, if you feel like putting your feet in the crystal river, you can do that. Uh, hey, you get to partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Uh, hey, you, you get to have access to him, uh, and you can find out those things you don't know now, uh, and you have access to all of heaven. Uh, you can walk on the streets of gold. Uh, hey, you can see the walls of jasper. Uh, you can go put your hands on the gates of pearl. Uh, Hey, you have access to the apostles and the prophets uh, and the saints of old. Uh, hey, what a blessing that heaven will be ours. Uh, now, I don't know about you. If I come to your house, I'm going to come be on my best behavior. I go to my house, I'm kicking my shoes off, sitting back in a recliner and taking a nap because it's mine. We're going to heaven. It's ours. And we have access to all that's there. Uh, I want you to look in verse number 2. I'm talking about the access of things. It says, In the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bared twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now look down verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. There's not much written about the tree of life. But in this chapter, two times it's mentioned. We find in verse number 2 that it's a tree of life, that it bears 12 manners of fruit, 12 different fruits. Now, that's miraculous in itself. I mean, here you got apple trees, they produce apples. you got orange trees, they produce oranges. And up there, uh, this... Uh, tree of life produces 12 different fruits uh, and every month she yields her fruits uh, now I don't know how long it takes for an apple tree to start having apples that you can pick off and eat uh, but it doesn't happen in a month but up there every month it yields its fruit and the leaves are for the healing of the nations that's a pretty miraculous tree can I say something about this tree of life it's exclusive there's only one Hmm. And it's not around here. It's in glory. Can I say something about this tree of life? It's eternal. It's a tree of life. It'll never be cut down. It'll never be uh, done away with. Uh, it'll never need to be pruned. Uh, it is a tree of life. It is exclusive and it's eternal. But can I say it? it's essential? The other place we find the tree of life mentioned, where it's mentioned and tells us a little bit about it, is back in Genesis, back in the Garden of Eden. And in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 22, after man chose to sin, this is what we find out about the tree of life. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man 
And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Can I say, when man chose to sin, if man would have partook of that tree, he would have never died. So God sent cherubim with flaming swords to keep man from the tree of life. It's essential. Hmm? We see the attributes. See the access. Have access to the tree of life. Hmm? Then we also find an announcement. Look at verse number 7. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Look at verse number 12. And behold, I come quickly. Look at verse number 20. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Well, what a promise. Uh, can I say? When Jesus left, there were two angels. When he ascended back to heaven, two angels said to his disciples, Why well, stand you here gazing? This same Jesus was taken up from you, shall so shall come again in like manner. Can I say, he said, if he goes away, he's coming back. Can I say, in this chapter, three times he says, I come quickly. I'm going to preach with God's help for a few minutes this morning on what a promise. What a promise. That is our blessed hope. Our blessed hope, he's coming back. Can I say, the Bible makes it clear, uh, that next prophetical event in Scripture, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is going to step out on the clouds and with a, a, a shout and the voice of the archangel, the trump of God's going to sound uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise uh, uh, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, it's called uh, the translation of the saints, the catching away of the saints. Uh, it's called the rapture of the church. Uh, Revelation chapter number 4 uh, it says there's a wind of heaven and God says come up hither uh, and John said he was in the presence of the Lord uh, hey uh, I don't know what the shout's going to be uh, but I know I'm going to hear it uh, and when I hear it this whole body of clay is going to give away to that soul that's in me uh, and in a moment in a twinkling of eye I'm going to be changed uh, and this mortality uh, is going to put on immortality uh, and this corruptible is going to put on incorruption uh, and I'm going to be with the Lord forevermore uh, that is not his coming uh, that is us meeting me in the air uh, but I'm saying friend uh, there's coming a time when Jesus is literally coming back to this earth uh, and he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years uh, after he puts an end to all the mess that's going on in this world uh, and he writes every wrong uh, and you and I is going to reign with with him uh, and I say blessed be the name of the Lord uh, you say preacher when he's when is he coming he's coming quickly uh, that's what he said uh, what a promise uh, it don't matter who's in the White House uh, no matter who's in the governor's mansion uh, no matter what's going on in this world uh, I have a blessed hope uh, Jesus is coming uh, and he's coming quickly what a promise uh, now notice some things about this promise. First of all, I want you to notice the one who rendered the promise. Look at verse 13. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Look at verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bride and morning star. You said, who's the one that rendered the promise? Who said he's coming quickly? Jesus himself, Lord of lords and King of kings. He's coming in glory. Can I say the first time he came, he came and wrapped on himself flesh uh, and came through the birth canal of a virgin uh, and he became like us uh, so that you and I through him could become like him uh, he became uh, our, our savior uh, that he could save us from our sins uh, but the next time he comes uh, he's not coming uh, where they're going to beat him uh, where they're going to abuse him uh, 
where they're going to make fun of him, uh, where they're going to mock him. Uh, the next time he comes, he's coming in his glory. Uh, and when wicked man sees him, uh, they're going to cry for the rocks to fall on them uh, so they can't see him. Uh, but friends, uh, they're going to have to deal with him uh, who they've rejected, uh, who's the one that rendered the promise. Uh, Jesus, the darling Son of God, uh, he's coming. Notice the responsibility to the promise. Ours and his. In verse number 7, he says, uh, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed or happy is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of, of this book. You see, we have a responsibility to this promise. He says, Our responsibility is to keep or keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. That word keepeth means receive as divine communication from God and apply them. Can I say when I see God's word, and I don't see John pinning down the book of Revelation. I see God using John to pin down the book of Revelation. And it's God speaking to me. It's divine communication. Uh, and once I've read it, uh, I now am responsible for it. Uh, and I want to apply it to my life. That is keeping uh, the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Uh, I want to do what God says. Uh, because he's coming quickly. Uh, and when he comes, I don't want to be ashamed. Uh, and I don't want him ashamed of me. Uh, I want to be faithful to what he said. Uh, so our responsibility is to keep the saints of the prophecy of this book. But look at verse number 14. The Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. Can I say, my dear friends, you cannot partake of the tree of life. You cannot enter into the gates of New Jerusalem unless you do the commandment of God. What is the commandment of God? That we repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And can I say Jesus died for you? and God has commanded for you to repent and trust in Christ. Uh, and if you reject Him, friend, uh, He's going to reject you when He comes back. Amen. We have a great responsibility to do what God says, and that's to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say, we're to keep, we're to do. But notice the responsibility of Him in verse 20. He say, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Our responsibility is to keep the Word of God. Our responsibility is to do the commandments of God. His responsibility says, Surely I come quickly. That word surely means without a doubt. Brother Brian, I don't have to doubt whether or not he's coming. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for him to come today. If he don't come today, Brother Brian, I'm going to get up tomorrow looking for him to come. Because, see, he promised that he's coming, Brother Donald, and the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. He said, surely, without a doubt. Hmm? Can I say we ought to have no hesitation, the fact he's coming. Hmm? Uh, we ought to totally rest on the fact that he's coming. The world don't believe he's coming, but listen, I don't believe most of what the world says. If you believe everything the news media tells you, I've got a bridge I want to sell you. Uh, you believe everything these politicians, ain't it amazing they say all these things till they get elected? Mm, they don't do any of it. Uh, amazes me how much they say they're going to do, and they can't do any of it without approval from Congress or approval from the legislature, but they're going to do it, only to get in there and not do it. Hmm? But you know who you can't believe? Jesus. He said, without a doubt. We see the one who rendered the promise. We see the responsibility to the promise. Notice the reward of the promise. Look at again in verse 12. He said, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Can I say, you do not lose serving Jesus. 
Old R.G. Lee, that great man of God of yesteryear, preached that message. There's a payday someday. Hmm? Now, a lot of times we don't see much of what we call the blessings of God. We see a lot of heartache. We see a lot of trouble. We see a lot of pain and misery. Because they that live godly shall suffer persecution. But we don't realize the sufferings of this present time, Miss Chris, are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. There's a payday coming. Huh? Hey, he blesses us along this way. The Christian life's the best life you can live. He gives you a life of peace and joy and love. Uh, he gives you a great place to worship with uh, other believers. Uh, he's good to you. He gives us his word. Uh, he blesses us every day, Miss Marcy, with undeserved blessings. Uh, Miss Mary, daily he loadeth us with benefits. Uh, uh, what a God he is. Uh, 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 you say, I don't believe that God just really blesses you. Well, he blesses me. Look right here. Look at this. Hallelujah. Huh? What a blessing. huh? Hey. This is worth not killing Christian, huh? There's a couple times we thought about it, huh? Hey, baby, how you doing, huh? It's a blessing. He blesses us. But there's a day, brother, Ronnie's going to reward us. That's a whole lot different, huh? Blessings may only last temporarily. You can have a good day today and a bad day tomorrow, but rewards are eternal. Hmm? Huh? Huh? There's a, there's, there's a payday coming. Hmm? Huh? What a blessing. Huh? By the way, how faithful you are in this life determines not only how much you get rewarded in the life to come, but how you're going to reign in that life. You can't beat serving God. Can I say this? There's a reaction to the promise. Look at the reaction of John, verse 20. He which testifieth these things says, Surely I come quickly. Look what John says. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Amen. Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Huh? John had seen all this world had to offer, and then John got a glimpse of the glory world. And John said, there ain't even there ain't no question. Come on, Lord. Huh? Paul got a glimpse of it. Paul said he was torn betwixt the two, staying here and establishing churches, doing what God wanted him to do, or just going home. Huh? Can I say... Those two said there ain't nothing in this world worth not going to heaven for. Mm. And John said, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Huh? John said, let, let all this mess go to the mess. Just come. Uh, uh, what a blessing. What a reaction. I wonder what your reaction is today. Mm. You know... Brother Clint, too many of us got stakes driven too, too deep in this world. We, we, we're saved. We know we're going to heaven. We just, we just want to hang out here for a while. Amen. Heard a guy preach a message one time, Brother Chad, on spending one more night with the frogs. That pestilence God sent Egypt, them frogs. Instead of being delivered, they just want to spend one more night with frogs. Uh you know what? I've seen all I need to see of this world. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing to check out of here and be in glory? Yeah. Sure it would. Uh, now notice lastly, if you will, the response needed for the promise to be relevant. You see, you can't get excited about Jesus coming quickly if you don't know Jesus. And there is a response needed in your life in order for this promise that he's coming quickly to be relevant. Lost people don't want him to come. They want more time. Well, friend, there's a lot of things I can promise you, but I cannot promise you more time. Because hmm? your life is in God's hands. And he's put a number on all of our lives. I don't know what day is coming up for you, but I'd want to be right with Jesus. Yeah. Look what the Bible says in verse number 17. This is the response needed. And the Spirit, capitalized, Spirit of God, the one that's speaking to your heart right now, lost person, the Spirit and the bride, that's the church. That's, that's why these folks are here worshiping. They open the doors, make sure you've got a place to hear the gospel. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let them that is a thirst, come. 
And whosoever, let him take the water of life freely. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. That whosoever includes you, friend. Uh, there are people who said Jesus only died for a certain few. Wrong. The Bible says he died for every man. Amen. And he made a way for whosoever will may come. Yes. You can be saved today. You meet the qualifications if you're lost. Because yes. that's who he came yes. seeking to save. The Bible says in Acts 2.21, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You can be saved today, friend. The Spirit is bidding you to come. The church is bidding you to come. We're going to have an invitation in a moment. We're going to invite you to come. The Lord is a gentleman. He'll never force himself on you, but he invites everybody to come and partake of salvation. You can be saved from your sins. They preach, I don't know how to be saved. My dear friends, it's easier to get saved than you know. But if you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you what the Bible says, so you can put your faith in what God says, and you can get born again today. If you're here today and you're saved, you ought to be excited. That promise is real. And you ought to live your life in light of that promise, that he's coming. He's coming today. John tells us in 1 John chapter 3, He that hath this hope purifieth himself. What hope? That he's coming. And see, when, when you're looking for him, you're going to be living for him. You ought to be looking for him to come. To come today. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to meet him? He could come today. Could come before this service is over. Everything the Bible said needed to be happened for him to come has happened. Are you ready to meet him? If you're here today and you're not saved, I wouldn't put it off any longer. You, ne you don't have any hope he'll ever speak to you again about salvation. But today's the day of salvation. Now's the accepted time. Why don't you come put your faith in what God said? You can be saved today. I wonder, will you be saved? Child of God, will you be ready? Because he's a coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're getting a song ready, we're going to have a word of prayer. If you're here not, not saved, just come. Just come. Just wave at me. Say, preacher, I need to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Folks are coming. If you're a child of God, are you ready? The Lord's to come today. Would he be pleased with where you are in your life spiritually? Would he be pleased uh, in how you're living for him, what you're doing for him? He's coming. He's coming quickly. What a promise. Let's, Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the blessed hope we have in your return. Thank you for what you have in store for us, God. We don't deserve heaven, but we sure do appreciate the hope we have of heaven because of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray for that one that's unsaved. God, I pray you'd convict them, and I pray that they'd come and trust Christ as Lord and Savior. Help them not to put it off. Help them to realize you're coming quickly, and they need to get right with you. God, I pray for your children. Lord, they may know you. They may be in fellowship with you. But, Lord, there's something still lacking. Lord, I pray today they'd get that thing settled and they'll be ready to meet you. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.